Welcome to We Are Soccer. We have a really special guest today, Donald Wine, the newly appointed board of director to the American Outlaws. Uh, Nate is with us as well, and we're just so excited to talk to, uh, to Donald. Donald, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate taking the time. Hey, it, you know, when, when the fellow Detroiters are involved, you know I got to get on. So uh, product of Farmington Hills, I think we yeah. grew up probably right down the street from each other. So uh, when, when my friend from Detroit said a fellow Detroit podcast was on here, I had to join. Uh, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, well, the main reason we're here is to talk about the U.S. men's and the U.S. women's national team and everything you kind of do uh, for them and the outlaws and everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with uh, the American outlaws. Well, like a lot of people, I got involved by going to my first match. I had no idea they existed back in 2008 when me and a good friend of mine went to uh, that U.S. Argentina game at the old Giant Stadium. Um, mm. This is the one where Messi had two breakaways that were stonewalled by Tim Howard uh, for a nice zero-zero draw. And at the end of the game, I saw a bunch of people in the end zone going crazy in the rain. I tell my friend, "I'll find out who those people are because that looks like a lot of fun. We'll join them next time." And a week later, I joined uh, Sam's Army and the American Outlaws. And the American Outlaws sent me a nice little membership kit and T-shirt and. Uh, I never heard back from Sam's army. So I, you know, decided to see what American outlaws were all about and dove right in. I, I formed the chapter here. I live in DC now uh, and uh, uh, formed the chapter here, which as we record today, we are celebrating our 12th anniversary of AODC wow, um, nice. and for years was the biggest chapter. So that's kind of how I, you know, started and got my teeth, but, but from there just kind of grew in and gave more responsibilities along the way. So it just started with going to a game, having a little fun, and then wondering what's going on with the group and trying to join in. And and from that, I mean, you've you've moved your way up and you're you have kind of a, a high position there on the board of directors and you do a lot of different things um, within that group. I was reading about it earlier. I mean, in stadium events you help with uh, merch merch uh, strategy and planning, the diversity, equity, and inclusion group, man. Uh, along with that, you do a bunch of writing as well. And, and, I do. and you're an attorney. How do you, how do you find the time, my friend? I stay organized um, for a lot of, I mean, uh, yesterday uh, uh, I was up at like 7 a.m. I was working and doing something until about 1 a.m. Um, and that is generally how it works. But honestly, it, it, it's fun, uh, but I keep organized and, and that's the only way I can do it. And yeah. I have a set structure and it works for me. It may not work for others, but because I'm able to stay organized and, and have a schedule and, and knock things off one by one, it makes it where little by little these things yep. get done. That's awesome. So just so you know, we've probably got a lot of viewers who are uh, international viewers and a lot of viewers who uh, are just getting into soccer. Um, either their kids are playing or they're just getting aware of because the sport is growing. Can you um, tell what tell our viewers what exactly the American Outlaws is. Um, it because to me it's more than just a supporter group, right? Uh, can you kind of explain uh, a little bit more in depth for us what the American Outlaws is and does? Yeah, so I mean, first and foremost, we are the diehard supporters for the U.S. national teams. That's the men, the women. We even go to youth games and, and we'll celebrate just about any soccer team we have: beach, foot, you know, futsal, deaf soccer, you know, whatever soccer group. Uh, pair of seven aside we've done some work with them in the past so nice. we really are involve ourselves with the game in the united states and of course on top of that a lot of us are diehard fans of the soccer teams in our communities dc united here i'm also one of the first ever season ticket holders for detroit city fc so you know we have that link as well where nice. we're tied into our communities and we're growing the game that way and for all these kids out there i mean this is how i started i i couldn't play football growing up so I played soccer and my mom and my dad signed me up for soccer and I enjoyed it. Uh, and, you know, back then it was hard to get games on TV. You probably had, you know, eight teams that I could watch uh, yeah. on TV. Now you have the world at your disposal. You can watch whatever game you want around the world. Uh, and, and so that is how we all kind of became what we call a family. We're AO family. So um, we we're growing the game around the world, uh, but mainly here in the United States, we're, we're reaching it to our communities. We're traveling together. We, we obviously watch the game a lot and discuss the game a lot. And because of that, we become more educated about it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that's the key here is uh, we are not just supporters of the game. We are helping to grow it in, in more ways than one. And also just to become a more educated fan base, it rubs off. And that is where the excitement comes in. 
That, that is absolutely awesome. Uh, I can see that Nate is just waiting to ask you questions. He's got, he was telling me this morning, <laughs> so many questions. Nate, go ahead, buddy. Jump yeah, in. So you I've, I've been to my handful of uh, U.S. soccer games myself. I've, you know, seen, seen the supporters. I know Robert who got us in uh, contact with you. And I, so I've seen the big family environment that you described and talked about, and it is quite amazing um, right down to it. Um, what would you say it has been the most exciting match you've been to or top two or three? Wow. So you're making me choose between kids here and we're just going to the, yep. to their nitty gritty. Um, <laughs> I will say this, the greatest game I have ever attended in my life is the U S France women's world cup quarterfinal in 2019. The, mm -hmm. from the pregame where we had like, 5,000 people that took over some, you know, community center and turned it into our pregame party to the March where we literally took over the streets of Paris, 10,000 people to making, you know, what should have been a absolute road game uh, that should have been the final turned it into a 50, 50, where it was French fans, you know, cheering. And then the United States fans cheering and then back and forth, back and forth us knowing the French supporters group that, you know, we've become friends over the years and just even that banter back and forth, that was all in good fun. And then on top of that, on the field, that game being one of the greatest games I've ever seen live uh, is will probably, I don't think it'll ever be replaced. Like that's how good that game was. Uh, I could probably go the rest of my life and still not find a better atmosphere, a better moment, a better sporting event than that one. That is that is so cool to hear. I don't, Nate. I don't know about you, but I didn't expect to hear. Uh, that. Right. I thought it might have actually been the uh, the Mexico USA um, Nations League game this earlier this year. Um, that well, that is the greatest tournament in the world. I, I love the Nations League. I, when oh. the Nations League was announced back in 2018, mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, "What is this? What is this? This is garbage." I was like the, one of the first people that was like, "I'm going to every single game." Like miss me with this. Oh, this is not a tournament that we need to worry about. I was involved and I went to every single game, really, really enjoyed that victory. And, and even, even this gold cup, uh, that was the first gold cup final I've ever been to. Um, and so being able to do that and watching us beat Mexico twice in one summer, that's always fun. Exactly. Always. Fun. So, so speaking, you, you know, you talked, you're going to El Salvador, I think uh, you said in 18 hours or so mm -hmm. um, you travel a lot with this team. I know Robert does a lot. So I'm for, i see, you know, just being on Facebook, I see the schedule and where you go. Is there a place that you've been that you absolutely dread going just whether it's because it's difficult to get around mm -hmm. because the fans might not be great or whatever. That's a great question. And Honestly, I haven't been to a away match where I'm thinking, man, this is just absolutely, you know, not something I would want to do again or something I want to go back to. All the fans are always great. And even the Mexico game, being in Mexico City at before you go to Azteca, it's one of the nicest atmospheres you can be a part of. It's once you get into the stadium that you become the enemy, so to speak. So, uh, but I will say this to the like really difficult road trips that the U.S has and also some of the fans have as far as just like the atmosphere and just them being right on top of you are these two coming up el salvador and honduras so i'm really looking forward to doing that it'll be my first time ever going to el salvador second time going to honduras in general but the first time for a soccer match so i'm really looking forward to seeing those atmospheres although with COVID, it's going to be a little tamer than normal but those are games that you kind of live for to be that away fan going into a stadium where you know, 30,000 people are cheering against you and cheering against your squad. And there's maybe 50 to a hundred of you and you're going nuts for your team. It, it really, it's really one of those things that a lot of people uh, should take advantage of, but it's also much easier. And, you know, it, it's definitely not what people think. It's not the, Oh my God, I can't, uh, you know, you don't have to be scared about going to these games. There's some of the funnest atmospheres and you'll intermingle with some of the greatest people. Uh, one of my one of my questions is going to be: Is it more fun to go to the away games, or is it more fun to be here in America for the home games? Uh, I know a lot of uh, I have a lot of family back in England, and they prefer to go to the away games. They say the atmosphere is just more fun and, and more friendly. So, your thoughts is maybe the away games you get more excitement out of? I think the away games are better, but not because of the atmosphere. The atmospheres are, are just as good. Mm -hmm. the The reason why they're fun is one: I love traveling. You get to see a new culture, a new environment new country, 
new, you know, people, you learn the language a little bit, you pick up some of the slang, uh, that sort of thing. And that's what makes it fun. It, and the atmosphere is on top of that. So, you know, of course, going to, you, you get to go across the United States is great. You see some cities that you probably don't visit often, but there are some countries I've, that I would never, ever have gone to, but for soccer. So that's where I say the away games always trump the, the home games, but both of them are equally entertaining as far as atmosphere is concerned. So piggybacking on that, what, you know, speaking of cities you've never been to or, or normally would have gone to or countries normally you've been to. So obviously you've had some experiences. What, what would you say like was one of the most memorable or more, more unique experiences on one of these travels that you've been to? Yeah, I just talked about this on, a, on another show just yesterday. But uh, when we went to the World Cup in Brazil 2014, uh, a few of my friends and I took a side trip. Uh, after between some of the games to an island that was off of the coast of Brazil called Fernando de Noronha. And if you look in any of the travel guides and you look at top beaches in the world, this place has three out of the five best in the world, and they're not four or five. There are three outstanding beaches. One, you have to go down a cliff to even access the beach. You have to go down this little like hand, like rope ladder uh, to get there. So we go down to this beach and we get on there. It's pristine. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful views in, in, in the world. And you turn around and there's this cliff and there's a waterfall. And we're like, wow, that's even prettier. And the guy's like, you know, our guy's like, you know, this only happens like two times a year. So you're pretty lucky that you're getting it this year. So we turn around and, and the sun is not setting, but it's starting to, you know, hit that late afternoon kind of yeah. like twilight. And one of my friends goes, soccer brought us here and it's uh, that will always live with me because that trip we would have never found that island if we hadn't been placed in natal which was a beautiful city in itself we would have never gone to that island and i never would have seen that view and i've never would have been on the best beach on the planet so that is undoubtedly the best trip that we've taken the best side trip or part of a trip because it is, again, a place that never in a million years would I have ventured to or even heard about right. if we were not placed there for the World Cup and we did not go. That's amazing. That's I mean, it's become more than just the soccer, right? It's become the friends, the friendship and the friends that you make and and the traveling together and the experiences. I mean, that that experience right there, you could bump into someone in a restaurant and tell them that experience and it wouldn't matter if it was soccer related to them, but they're probably just astounded at, uh, astonished at the, the awesome story that you just told. Right. I mean, that, that's what it comes down to is what it is. And that's kind I of mean, what it's like. It's like uh, it's like Goodfellas. If you guys have seen that where they, you know, they stay all the family, they just, they, they do everything together. They eat together. They party together. That's kind of what we do. You know, when we go on these trips We're we're planning trips, you know, what, there's no soccer involved because we are so part of each other's lives and that, at this yeah. point that we just say, oh, you know, let's take an actual vacation where we don't have to worry about soccer and we will hang out. We'll go, you know, go on those trips. We'll go on soccer trips together. We, you know, when we have weddings, it's another chance for us to get together. So it really is a family. It really becomes that it, as you move along and as you, you know, gain some of these bonds, especially through some of these trips. Awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Do you ever just get confused on those non-soccer trips and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> There's oh, a yeah. game to go to. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's part of being organized. You're like sitting there, you're like, okay, trip here, trip here, going to this game, going to this game. Whose wedding is this? Uh, Wait, this oh, is yeah, an actual vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm seeing, I'm, seeing my, I'm seeing my dad. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll do that. Wait, and what? It's like, okay, I'm leaving that. And then I'm going to this other game. So, yeah, it, 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 it becomes fun. It is obviously, you know, sometimes it becomes tiring because you are on the road quite a bit. But uh, as long as, again, as long as I stay organized, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, on the ball. So let, let's bring it back to the let's bring it back to the teams right now. The, the U.S. women's national team obviously lost recently in the Olympics, uh, finishing. Th we say lost uh, for us. Uh, I don't know if you you feel the same, but they were expected to win. We expect them to come home with gold. Uh, they came home with bronze. Um, and um, it, do you? We'll, we'll say men's and women's teams. The men have done very well. The women not so well recently. Do you like the direction that both teams are heading? Uh, do you think there's a change needed uh, in one on the women's side? There's been a lot of discussion about some of the older players possibly being pushed out a little bit. And, and you know, do we need a new coach? What's your what's your thoughts on that? Or, or do you try to stay away from a lot of that, uh, those discussions? No, I mean, we talk about that all the time. I mean, we talk about it in real time. And, and that's kind of how the fan base is, is as a player does well in Europe or even here in Major League Soccer or on the national team. 
you know, the talk surrounds like, okay, what about this player? Should they be mm-hmm. starting? Should, you know, should he be sitting? Should he go to this club? You know, that's, it, it's, it's our, it's our normal pub talk, but we do it all the time. And it's focused around our national teams. I say in the case of the men's team, the direction you can't, if you are not excited about the promise that this team shows, then I don't, I, I want to know what you need further right. to become excited about it because this team is awesome. And, uh, you know, they're ninth in the world or 10th in the world. And maybe people say, okay, maybe they're not ranked 10th, but you know what, they've been playing like it. So, uh, and, and I'm really excited to see them and how they can do in this window. Cause this is going to start, this is going to jumpstart, you know, this next little cycle for us. So I'm really excited about that. But for the women, I think there are going to be some changes. I think we're, we need to get younger. Um, we have, we've introduced some players over the last few months. A lot of them didn't make the Olympic team, but I think that's, you know, partly because some of these older players, these legends were given one last shot to try and win, an, win another gold medal, uh, which they were rightfully, you know, they've deserved that, that opportunity. But I think at the end of the day, now is going to be, they're less than a year away from qualifying for the world cup. So they need to make sure that they have the young stars in place, the next generation ready to go. And I think Vlaco is the guy to do it. I, I think it's harsh for people to think that he should be fired because he's lost a match. I mean, just think about it. He's lost, he's lost two matches in his career. They just happened to be during the Olympics. Right. Um, but I think walking away with bronze may not have been the goal, but it's definitely an achievement where we were, we almost feel we should feel honored that we are disappointed in bronze because right. everyone else isn't, you know, that's how, that's how I see it. And so, I think the next step is to, you know, learn from that and kind of tinker with the lineup, see who's going to, you know, continue on from the, you know, over 30 uh, generation of players Mm -hmm. and see who from the, you know, younger twenties, the 18 year olds, 19 year olds, who of them are ready to step up. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. 100% agree. Going back to the men's team, you uh, said you're excited. Obviously I'm excited too. Who, who would you be most excited to, to see start, uh, coming up in this match like who's your number one like can't wait to see that guy take the field oh well as someone we've seen a lot of uh i think my favorite player on the team is weston mckinney um he is you know obviously dynamite and you know even just the fact that he's part of trade talks and and transfer talks while he's in camp and every one of them people just again they just see one transfer rumor oh burnley like no don't send him burnley wait tottenham don't send him to tottenham send him burnley before tottenham like the fact that he's that wanted by some of the biggest clubs in the world lets you know how good of a player he is. And, and the fact that even after that, his current team is like, we're not trying to trade him. He's, he's, he's one of us. He's staying. So I want to see him just let, let loose and set free in CONCACAF because we see, we've seen during the nation's league that he's up to that task, all the, you know, the, just the, the back and forth, the banter, just the, you know, the, the chirpiness, we'll call it. Uh, there's another word for it, but we'll call it the chirpiness that CONCACAF likes to offer. He's ready for that too. So I'm looking forward to seeing him on the, on the field uh, this week. Absolutely agree. I think he's going to be the player that's really going to step up. He's going to surpri- surprise some people in the next year or two, in my opinion, with how good he really is. There's a reason that uh, Juventus do not want to sell him. They, they want to keep him because they have seen something in that kid. And it's going to show in the next year or two, the more he plays in that league and with that team and that coach, it's going to help the U S men's national team out greatly. So couldn't agree more that he's exciting time. It, this is an exciting time for American soccer. I can't remember in, in my 30 years of following this team, a more exciting time. I mean, we've got players all over Europe. We've got top players who are going to come back here and we've got young kids who are now going into Europe as well. And they're just learning the trade and going to come back here and do a real good job for the U.S. men's national team. Most exciting time ever. Are you following a lot of those players that, that head over to Europe? You know, like the Hoppe, the, obviously McKinney's over there. Uh, a bunch of these young kids are heading over to the Bundesliga. Do you follow a lot of them? Uh, do you kind of keep oh. up with how they're doing? Oh, yeah. I mean, so I, the great thing is I have ESPN Plus and... <laughs> Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Real Madrid fan, so they're on ESPN+. Plus. I have the quad screen, and the quad screen is on from about 8.30 in the morning until a, a little after 12.30 at night on weekends because I can, at, throughout the day, have three or four games on my TV, which is great. And so being able to watch all of these guys develop and, and play weekly, I mean, growing up, that's something that I didn't get a chance to do. You, you couldn't, if a player was playing in Europe, you never saw him again. 
and there was no MLS, you know, when I was a kid, it was not until high school that major league soccer came about. So I, I think that is where I think a lot of people need to fully take advantage of, you know, this opportunity that we have to see these players play. You get to see players here in major league soccer every weekend, and you get to see players abroad every weekend, take advantage of it because that that's only going to gain your interest. And as you see a guy progress throughout the ranks and come up at a club, whether it's here or abroad, and then join the national team. That's what we want to see. We have a million of those type of stories yep. and we get to watch them unfold every weekend. It's great to see. Do you, do you watch a lot of the MLS is um, I mean, is that kind of, is it, is it something you focus on in the weekend um, that league? Oh yeah. I, I watch just about every game. Um, I, you know, I'm a DC United supporter uh, go to, you know, I was a season ticket holder until COVID hit. Uh, so I, I used to go to every single game and it, it's, this league is way better. And, and I hate the people who just swear off this league and say it's, it's, it's garbage because it's not. And half of the national team that's playing in Europe got their start in major league soccer, whether it be through an Academy or actually playing four teams in major league soccer before they went over. It, it's part of the development. And I think part of this soccer nation is having those debates of what, what does major league soccer have to be for us to be a footballing nation is it a selling league? Is it a league that develops talent and, and keeps them uh, keeps some people here? Uh, but I think there's a, you know, I think there's a, a, a make or break point where we can have some guys here and some guys abroad, mm -hmm. but that national team has to reflect that too. It's not just going to be all European players. There's going to be some major league soccer players that are among the best that America has to offer. And I think people need to watch this league and they'll see that, Hey, these guys that are coming up, they're really, really, really good. And maybe they're not in Europe right now, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be there. They they have the talent to play. Absolutely. Yeah. I always go ahead, Nate. Go ahead. I was gonna say I never like the the comparison with people. I like MLS. I like for what it is. I don't like comparing it to other leagues or anything like that. Because it is what it is. And it's unique and it's nice in its own way. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's not the EPL. It's not Bundesliga. It's not La Liga, but it is a very nice league. And it has some great players in it. Um, it's just a different setup and, and appreciate it for what it is. Um, so I, I think the MLS is going to continue to get it better. They're making some good decisions. They correct great players coming through. They all have academies that are really set up now. It's, it's just going to benefit. Um, and as we've seen in the past couple of years, soccer is the, is the hot sport. Now, hockey's kind of gone downhill. Baseball is on trending downwards. Um, soccer is going to be that sport. And I think by the time 2026 rolls around with the World Cup here, um, this is going to be the sport that a lot of people are going to be focusing on. It might not be able to top um, football or basketball, but I bet you it'll be close. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It, it's, it's, and again, I don't even try to compare it to that, right? Because I, I am a fan of all sports. I watch, I'm, I'm a sports nut. I'm, I'm, I am unique in that sense. I, I will watch, I watch, a, I watch Ozzy Rules football every weekend. I am that guy. Wow. But there's some people who won't watch hockey, but they'll watch soccer. They won't watch baseball, but they'll watch basketball. And that's fine too. And that's where soccer can find their little niche and say, Hey, you know, you can watch, you can watch a basketball game in the afternoon and then watch soccer at night. That's totally fine. Or you can watch uh, our games in the morning and then switch over to, you know, college football or football in the afternoon. That's totally fine. It's, it's, it's a okay to love more than one sport. And I think soccer has that niche where they can be the sport for more people and have that crossover. I think that's coming. I think that with the generations now that are coming up, I think that that's what it is. People are going to love football still, but they're also going to love soccer and they're going to be multi-sport, you know, uh, fans. Um, Robert, it, it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, the the work you're doing with the American Outlaws, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Donald, <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. The work you're doing with the American Outlaws is phenomenal. I, I need to do a little bit more reading. Um, you guys aren't just a supporters group your family and, and the fact that you have started out the story you told us from 2008 attending your first U.S. Men's National Team to now being on the board of directors. Um, Donald, that, that's, that's amazing. It, it, is, it shows your dedication and it shows your love and passion for the sport. Uh, and that's what we do here. Uh, that's why Nate and I have this show, just because we love the sport. We love promoting the sport and, and, and just bringing it to more people. So um, hopefully- One last thing. Well, please Just real quick um, say, and it might sound silly, but you're hearing about all these great trips. You're hearing about all this great community. If I'm 
tuning in or watching, how do I become on in that area or how do I jump on to become, uh, you know, part of the American Outlaw Supporter Group? Absolutely. So you go to theamericanoutlaws.com. That's our website. And we obviously have chapters. We have 200 chapters, including one in Mexico City and one in London. So if you're listening internationally and you're in one of those cities, we have a chapter for you. Uh, and we also have chapters that are starting, trying to start uh, all over the country and, and even some abroad. So uh, I say, find the chapter that's nearest you. Go out, meet those people. Um, there's, you're going to have people. And again, some people will sit down, they'll buy you your first drink or buy you an appetizer, and you can chat them up about the game and chat them up about the American Outlaws. That's how, uh, w- what's unique about us is that we have 20,000 members and we have 20,000 stories of how they became a member. And yours could be the next one. So uh, I encourage you to learn more about it. And really, you should, you know, if, if you're in Nashville for this weekend, come find us. We have a tailgate. We have a night before at Tailgate Brewery uh, in Music Row. We have a tailgate at the stadium the day of the game. And we do that for every single home game. So these next one's coming up in Columbus. For some of you that can go down or Cincinnati, we will be there. So come find us. Say hi. Introduce yourself. Let them know that you're interested in, in joining or just learning more. And we'll be happy to help you and show you around and our family can become your family. That, that is absolutely awesome. Well, Nate and I plan on uh, trying to attend those games in Columbus and Cincinnati. So we might have to come and find you and meet up and uh, we'll see you there <laughs> your hand and buy you a beer, my friend. Uh, and I got a shirt. So there you go. We have plenty of uh, merch is coming. Merch is going to be broken <laughs> out this fall. We're I'm trying to make sure everyone looks nice uh, while we're watching. I can get a games. new shirt. Nice new, uh, new shirts. Yeah. We, nice. We're ready to go. New shirts for everybody. Awesome. Donald, thank you so much. Um, love what you're doing with America, American Outlaws. We're going to have to touch base with you again very soon. Um, but for now, thank you again for joining. And uh, we appreciate the time, my friend. Hey, appreciate you guys. And always appreciate uh, the, st- the state of Michigan represented on the pod. So uh, keep up the great work, guys. Cheers. Thank you.